If you live in a war zone, you're not surprised when things blow up. And the South was a war zone. Charlotte remained moderate and out of the spotlight of the civil rights movement until 1965. You know, violence was always something that you read about in the newspapers or you saw on television somewhere else. Kelly Alexander Jr. was just 17 years old in 1965, a student at the all-black West Charlotte High School. His parents, along with so many other African Americans during the 60s, were in the midst of a major push for desegregation. Alexander's father, Kelly Sr., led the North Carolina NAACP. Uh, he was traveling, you know, all the time, all over the place. Uh, especially in North Carolina. Alexander visited mostly small communities urging black people to register to vote. From the standpoint of segregationalist, you know, he was an agitator. His brother, Fred Alexander, also a member of the NAACP, ran the organization's voter registration and education activities. He could move in certain circles and folks found him to be uh, acceptable. But on the other hand, he was working real hard to change the fundamentals to be able to give black folk uh, a much better chance at actually grasping some of the levers of power. Civil rights attorney Julius Chambers, another vital figure in Charlotte in 1965, pushed for equality. His approach was to figure out how to do it, you know, through the law, through the courts. And Dr. Reginald Hawkins, NAACP leader and visionary, known as the father of Charlotte's civil rights movement. Ran for governor at a time when uh, that was unheard of for a black person to do that. All four men, NAACP leaders in Charlotte, making a loud noise for change, and people were listening. There was peace in Charlotte until one cold November night in 1965. Four bombs propelled the Queen City into the battle over civil rights. I remember hearing what I th interpreted as thunder off in the distance. And the next thing I knew, there was a blinding light. Dynamite ripped through the Alexander home. And basically, the front of the house was gone. Alexander still lives in the home that he grew up in. In fact, this is the bedroom that he was sleeping in when that bomb exploded. Windows were very high. The explosive had been placed <coughs> on the uh, at the front of the house on the porch. But it wasn't just the Alexander home bomb that night. The homes of Chambers, Hawkins, and Alexander's Uncle Fred's home right next door also exploded. No one got hurt. Police began a lengthy investigation, and there was outrage from the community that something so violent could happen in Charlotte. You know, more and more folks started ex ex vocally expressing the fact that the community needed to come together in solidarity. That was one of the reasons why the community started working to repair everybody's homes. Charlotte Mayor Stan Brookshire, along with thousands of others, attended a rally at Ovens Auditorium to denounce the violence. The very fact that right after that bombing, people of different ideological perspectives, people of different races, came together to say, never again, this is not what we want to have uh, our city to be remembered for. Trish Williford, WCCB News.